Hi, this is Erika Kassab from Small Robot Studio. Today, I'll teach you a couple sculpting techniques within Nomad Sculpt that I used to create the accessories in my cat potion. If you want to learn how I created the shape of the bottle and how you can achieve a glass look within Nomad, check out our previous video. Let's get started with the cat head attachment and the cork. The very first thing that I want to do is set my reference. So I'm going to open the background menu and I'm going to tap on reference image. Since I want to focus on the top, I want to make a close up. I'll modify its scale and location. Then I'm going to move my object to match it. It will be a good idea to snap on a front view and hold that again so it's locked. Now even if I try rotating, it's not going to let me, it will only let me zoom. Make sure you deactivate perspective and line up your object. Once you get it where you want it, tap again on your snap cube to unlock it. Go to the camera view and tap on add view. I'm going to name it see you as in close up. And now even if I move my camera around or shift my reference, when I tap on the saved camera, it's going to go back to that alignment. I'm going to get started with the cap head now. Inside the scene menu, scroll down and tap on a sphere primitive. The topology menu is going to open, so I'm going to set the post subdivision to a low number. Also, I'm going to turn on the wireframe so I can see the mesh that creates this object. And with the gizmo tool, I'm going to scale the sound and put it roughly where this cat head is. If you're happy with the size, validate this. I'm gonna pick the Selection Mask tool. Make sure that symmetry is activated. I'm gonna use the lasso method and I'm gonna select the sides. I'm gonna make sure that the center is left clean. On the mask menu, I'm gonna select Invert. Select my gizmo, activate symmetry. I'm gonna make this a tad bigger. I am looking to get this flat silhouette that I get from my reference. And now I can move this to the side. I'm gonna scale it as well with the X axis. I like this, so I'm gonna select again a mask tool. Once again, in the mask settings, and I'm going to tap where it says clear. And now I'm going to choose the move tool and I'm going to use it to adjust the shape from the bottom so it fits my reference more closely. It seems that I brought up a couple items that I created before this recording. You can ignore them for now. I'll show you how to create them. I'm going to go into the resolution menu in the first tab, multi resolution, and I'm going to tap where it says subdivide. This is going to make this shape smoother. I can tap a couple times to get more resolution and I can easily move this slider to move between these different resolution levels and make adjustments. If I'm working with detail, I'm going to work with higher resolutions. If I'm working with blocking, the best is to go to lower resolutions. And once again, with this extra topology, I can make a few more detailed changes. Next, I'm going to create the neck. For this, I'm going to choose the tube tool and path creation. I'm going to tap twice on the background, not on the mesh. And I'm going to tap on this green circle. I'm going to try to align this so they look straight. And now with the gizmo, I'm going to bring them to the center. If you want to hide the gizmo, just tap again on tube. Having the wire from the head is going to help me center it even better. Let's bring it to the neck. And I'm going to select radius. If I tap it once, it's going to give me two different controllers to set a start and an end radius, which I will use to align the cat head. I'm going to make it longer than what it looks on the reference. And I'm going to tap once between these points to get an extra point. Once again, tap on radius. And now each point is going to have its own controller. So I can make this thinner in the center. Make sure that all of these points look white. If you tap twice on them, 
they're gonna turn black and give you a corner. This of course depends on the results that you are looking for. You can add more points to get more detailed curves. Seems pretty good. I'm gonna make sure that it's centered here. And from the side view, I'll have to squish it so it fits. I'm not gonna validate this yet in case I need to make changes. I wanna keep this editable point. But now it's time for the ears. Once again, I'm gonna use a tube tool in pad mode and on the background, tap twice. Let's activate radius. Let's make a wide ear. Let's align it with one of our lovely ears. This menu is getting on the way, which is unfortunate. I guess I'll have to move a little bit out of my reference and sort of calculate where it's gonna go. Size seems okay. I'm gonna add one more point to get that lovely curvature. Tab three times on radius. And these points are black. I want them to look like nice curves, not corners. Try to get the shape as close as possible. It's okay if it's not perfect. It's probably better if your shape is slightly bigger than the reference than being smaller than your reference. Once you're happy with that, let's validate it. And once again, with either the move or drag tool, we can start making some of adjustments. To get this rounded tip in the corner, it might help to smooth this shape. This seem to be enough adjustments for the ear, so I'm gonna go to the symmetry menu and choose right to left, because I want to duplicate the right ear into the left. We're almost done with this blocking. Once again on the scene menu, I am gonna choose a cylinder primitive, this time for the cork. With the gizmo, I'm gonna make it roughly that shape. Just like before, by tapping on radius, it's gonna give me the option of having two different sizes at the start and end. This cork is gonna look a bit weird with very sharp corners, so inside the topology menu, I'm gonna go into the parameter section, set this to two, and here in the topology section, I am gonna lower this slider. You'll see this corner is getting rounder the lower this number is. Once again, I'm not gonna validate it yet, cause I wanna be able to do adjustments before I commit. With all the places blocked in, we can shape them all together with more detail. I mainly use the tools Move, Clay, Flatten and Smooth to tweak them. My priority is to get a clean silhouette and the objects to look as a whole, even if they are still separated. From the very start, it helps to have an idea of the materials you want your sculpts to be made of. I plan the head to be made of personaline, hugging the cork. So, so the cat head is going to be separated from the cork, so it's easy to texture them later. I'm gonna turn off my reference and I'm gonna go piece by piece and open the topology menu in multi-resolution and make sure that this looks smooth. I might need to subdivide a couple times and delete the lower level. This is gonna ensure I have a nice and smooth surface. If it looks polygonal, it's gonna give us problems later. For my head, I already created the resolution levels. I just need to go to the highest ones and delete the lowest. This is what it looks like with more wireframe. Same for the neck, since it's not validated yet. In the very same menu, the topology menu, which changes because this is contextual, I can add topology on this section. I'm gonna scroll it higher, turn on the wireframe if you're not sure what's happening. And now by holding down smooth, Tap on all the geometries that you want to merge together. Back to the topology menu, we're going to have the voxel remesh option. Let's see how it works with this number. We might need to change it. This seems okay to me. I don't think I need to go to a higher resolution. I can fix hole like this with the flatten tool set to fill. And like the action set is going to fill holes. Judging this from a back view, this line doesn't look very clean. So I'm gonna use the move or drag tool to make this look. Gotta make sure that it looks good from any point of view. Once again, this is a stage of tweaking for which I use pretty much the same tools. Clay, flatten, smooth, and the good old move tool. 
If you're not sure whether your silhouette is working, you can always open the materials menu and tap on always on lid. This is gonna take away any shading on your object and you can judge it merely by its silhouette if it's looking good, if it's clean or if it needs any adjustment. Here's what it looks like so far. I'm gonna go to a full view of my object to work on the final objects around the base of the head and the color. This is pretty easy to do because it's a bunch of cylinders. So I'm not gonna bore you with every single detail about how I do them. What you must know is that this basis that I'm doing for the head of the cat will eventually be merged, but not yet. And you'll see why. For this ring on the side, I'm gonna activate snap with my gizmo here on the left and set it to 90 degree. So I can rotate this cylinder exactly 90 degrees. I'm also gonna tap here on the top where it says hole. So it's a hollow cylinder. By tapping on edit, I'm gonna hide those controllers that I don't need at the moment. Once I have it in place, it's much easier to judge if I need to modify the size of the hole and the thickness overall. And it's time to do the metal with yet another cylinder. Rotate it again 90 degrees, quite squished, and scale down. Once you like this, we are gonna validate this. We're gonna go into the topology menu, but this time into the fourth section, the on name section. And at the very bottom, you're gonna find Tri Planner. So we're gonna convert this. Tri Planner creates this box around the object. And by drawing the shadows, you can define the shape of the front and the side views. Let's solo it here at the bottom, so the rest is not distracting me. You'll be painting with your mask tool, so either with the brush or the select mask. If you wanna erase, tap on Unmask. And this is how this is gonna affect your shape. I'm gonna go to a orthographic view from the back. I'm gonna choose Select Mask, Ellipse Mode, and here at the top on the Mask Mode, I'm gonna scroll down to where it says circle and centered to make sure that this is a perfect circle. I can close that down and I will unmask a center bit to get the whole of that middle. And if you're happy with that, you can validate right away. Now for the drawing within the middle, I'm gonna hide my reference and once again lock my front view by tapping on the snap cube. I'm gonna once again use the mask tool. If the strokes look pixelated, try adding an extra resolution level. Once you have a nice drawing you like, we're gonna go into the top mask menu and tap on engrave slash emboss. Hide that mesh that was just created erase the mask and your creation is now part of the middle. You'll have to get rid of that mesh because we don't need it. When I first sculpted this, I discovered that my design was not gonna work because this color is buried within the bottle. So I had to experiment with different ways to keep the idea. Just because it looks good on 2D, it doesn't mean that it's gonna work on 3D. Before I carry on creating the cat paws, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the group of amazing people that support the channel via Patreon. Thank you so, so much. By the way, all our patrons gain access to a growing library of 3D assets, including this model, ready for texturing, and many more. Learn more at patreon.com slash smallrobotstudio, or have a look at our Gumroad store to buy individual assets. Let's get back to the pause. Now, for the pause, Inside the scene menu, I'm gonna scroll down and choose Tri Planner. I'm gonna scale this down to one of the paws. In fact, let's make a close up of the reference image. I wanna make sure that this box is slightly bigger than my paw so I have room to paint. I'm gonna turn off the symmetry and with the mask brush, I'm gonna paint this silhouette. But I am not going to include the toes because I can make those much easier later with a simple primitive. Don't worry about making it perfect, this is just the blocking. 
with my gizmo I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees and once again draw the same shape. Once you think the shape is working we can validate this and the cube is gonna be gone. With our base shape in place we're gonna now create some sausage fingers. You can use a sphere but I actually prefer to start with a cylinder. Within the topology menu I'm gonna increase the post subdivision number and lower the constant density of the topology. With these settings I can get a very clean sausage shape. This seems a good starting shape so validate. I'm gonna squish it a little bit, scale it down and locate it where the little bins go. We've got one, let's deactivate the snap, clone this to get a copy and rotate it to locate another toe. Now with our favorite tools, clay, flatten, move and smooth, we can refine this shape, this rough shape that we created. In fact, I'm gonna voxel it and lower its topology so it's easier to manipulate. With smooth and flatten I can get a nice curve where I have those corners. With just a couple adjustments, this ugly looking triplanar is looking much nicer. Keep adjusting until you're happy with the result and, like before, select all the shapes, merge and merge them with voxel merge. We're almost done, but this paw is intersecting the bottle instead of hugging it. So I'm gonna create a duplicate of my bottle and hide it. I am gonna select as well my paw and tap on voxel merge. By merging this with a shape hidden, it means that it's gonna subtract it from the one that is visible. If I solo it, now our paw, not our paw, is truly hugging the bottle. It seems that there's some paint that I picked up, so I'm gonna select white and paint all. Every time you do a voxel merge, you might wanna do some adjustments especially to avoid weird looking corners. Use pinch if you want to sharpen them. To get the other three paws, we're gonna go into the symmetry menu and use the mirroring tool. Right now my symmetry is set to Z and there is a plane telling me where the mirroring is gonna be created. So I'll tap left to right, accept that, let's change this to an X plane so now it is going to be made from this side to this side. Once again, left to right. And we have all our paws. Based on the reference, they're not quite in the correct location, so I'll have to go back and fix this. Here's where we are at. Without the reference, because now it's sort of getting in the way. The very last things to do are the tail and the rope that holds the tag. If you're wondering how to do the tag, you already know. It's the very same process that we did for the color, except starting with a cube. Both the tail and the rope were created with the tube tool and pad creation. To make this curve look more natural, I like to set it to a spline here at the top menu. The rope takes some patience to get right, especially if you want to do a knot. It's all about dragging the end tapping in center to create a new node and moving it. It's a bit tedious, but the result looks real nice. It's okay if the geometries intersect a little bit. This is such a tiny detail that is not gonna be visible in the distance. When creating the tail, I set my tube to a snapping mode of every point, so it sticks to existing surface, in this case, the potion. Now a cat tail does not have square corners, so we're gonna use once again our trick, increase post subdivision and lower the topology. So we get those nice sausage-like endings. And with radius I can change the tip of the tail to be much larger at the end than at the beginning. While editing this tail, if you want it to stick to the surface, make sure to activate Snap on the top menu. The tail is another item that I changed. The 2D design technically worked on 3D, but I was not a fan of how it looked in the end. So again, I deviated from the original design. Anyway, 
Here's the final result. As always, I would love to see what you create. Feel free to tag me on social media. See you soon and happy sculpting! That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.